Our protagonist, Cecilia, wakes up to see it's a very early hour in the night. She carefully removes her blanket and a man's hand that rests on her. She takes out a bottle of pills from under the bed. They are diazepam. She whispers the name Adrian to the sleeping man. He doesn't wake up. She takes a glass of water that was likely mixed with the pills before she slowly starts to walk away. She spills the water out in the sink and collects a bag with several items in it. She also stands on a stool to direct a ceiling camera in the direction of Adrian. It shows her cell phone a live view of him sleeping. Moving along, Cecilia enters what looks like a research room. Advanced gadgetry seems to be under development there. She uses a monitor to disable all the cameras in the house, except for the one showing the man. She disables the alarm too. As she quickly walks through the multi-million dollar house, she mistakenly kicks a dog bowl, which creates a loud sound. Thankfully, it doesn't wake up Adrian. Cecilia exits from the garage and sees the dog, Zeus, standing behind her. She tells the dog she is sorry she can't take it with her. While she takes off Zeus's collar, it bumps into the car, causing its alarm to sound off. Due to this, the lady starts to run. She tosses her bag over a high fence prior to climbing it. At this moment, we see the lights turn on in the house. Once she gets on the other side of the fence, she runs until she enters the woods. On the road she waits for a woman named Emily. Soon a car arrives and Cecilia gets in but she drops her bottle of diazepam in the process. Emily is curious to know what is going on. Cecilia wants to explain later. Now she wants Emily to drive. During this confusing instant, Adrian runs up to the car, demanding that the runaway open the door. Somehow he is strong enough to shatter the window with his punch. This gives Emily the incentive to drive. Left alone in the woods at night, Adrian picks up the pills Cecilia dropped. Two weeks have passed since that incident. Cecilia stands inside another house and looks out the window at dawn. A man says her name from behind. She tells him she can't sleep. Being humorous, he says if one closes their eyes and lies down, sleep should usually claim the person. He is James, also saying that he swore to her sister he would get Cecilia to step outside of his house. He promises to her that Adrian is not out there. She exits the house to collect the mail. However, a problem appears when someone runs behind her. The traumatized lady gets scared that the person is Adrian, so she runs back. But it's just a random jogger. James observes this and shakes his head. Inside his house, she tells him she's not ready for this. We learn the distance she walked to the mailbox is the furthest she has gone in the past two weeks of staying at this house. At a different time, we see how paranoid Cecilia is, because she looks at a website that asks its readers if they are being watched. She does not want James to see what she is looking at. She covers her webcam with a substance to make it blurry. Soon Emily arrives, and Cecilia, her sister, uneasily asks her what she is doing there. Emily simply responds, it's nice to see her too. Seeing there is some tension between the siblings, James decides to let them be alone. Cecilia says she asked her not to come there, for Adrian knows where Emily lives. He could follow her to James's house. Emily replies, she has news. Adrian is deceased. This surprises Cecilia. Looking at her sister's phone, she reads that Adrian, an optics groundbreaker, has passed away by his decision. Emily softly asks what the man did to her. Due to the severity of the news, Cecilia has to sit on the washroom floor to process it. Later, the trio sits at a table, and our heroine tells the other two this doesn't make sense. She says Adrian was always in control of everything, including her. He controlled how she looked, what she wore, and what she ate. Eventually, it even developed to him controlling what she thought. She struggles to finish the sentence of what he did if he didn't like what he assumed she was thinking. James guesses Adrian would hit her, prompting her to say he is correct. But he would do other things too that she does not mention. She adds, he wanted to have a baby. She knew if he did that, she would never be able to get away from him. Thus she took birth control without him knowing about it. The problem with taking birth control though, is that it can't continue indefinitely. That is why she resorted to calling her sister. Emily tries to comfort her by saying she is safe now, because Adrian is gone. Cecilia steps out of the house with more confidence. The next scene has James talking to his daughter, Sydney. She tells him that going to Parsons is her goal. James wants her to have more than one goal. At this moment, Cecilia places the mail from the mailbox on the counter, and James claps for her. One of the letters is for her, which surprises the lady, for no one is supposed to know she is there. In a corporate building, the sisters sit in an empty room. A man is there with them, saying he is the appointed attorney representing his brother's trust. He is required to enact Adrian's final wishes. The latter wanted him to read a prepared statement. Therefore, he starts to read that Adrian wrote his relationship with Cecilia was far from perfect, but he thought they had enough trust that she would talk to him rather than run away. Emily stops him from reading further. She wants him to talk about the money he discussed with her on the phone. Soon the sisters learn Adrian's ashes are in an urn in the room. Cecilia is getting $5 million from the deceased man. The great deal is even greater once she hears it is all tax-free. She will receive the money in payments of $100,000 each month for the next four years. 
Back at James's house, Cecilia surprises him and Sydney with a ladder she bought. It's the least she could do for him to let her stay there. She gets his daughter to climb it so she can collect an envelope for herself. Sydney opens the letter inside, which shows her she has a new bank account. Cecilia says she will put $10,000 in it every month for the rest of the year. She called the account Parsons, the college Sydney wishes to attend. This fortune makes the girl hug Cecilia, yet James says it's too much of a gift. Since she isn't taking it back, he announces they have to celebrate. Cecilia is prepared with that, presenting a bottle of wine. James slightly ruins the celebration by saying his daughter cannot drink due to her being underage. He is a policeman, meaning it will be extra bad if he lets her consume the alcohol. In the morning he leaves for work while Cecilia cooks breakfast. He tells her to wake Sydney up, prompting the lady to do that. As she does, the food catches fire in the frying pan. Cecilia rushes back to put it out, but Sydney knows how to do it best by using a fire extinguisher. At night we focus on Cecilia working on her laptop. She hears something and calls out to James. Not getting a response, she walks out of the room to see if he's out there. She goes to the front door, which is open for some reason. She steps outside to look around before going back in to lock the door. When she sleeps with Sydney, their blanket gets removed slowly. It causes Cecilia to wake up and she sees someone standing nearby. It scares her, until she realizes it's a mannequin. She gets up to collect the blanket. Looking at a chair, she sees something off about it. Thus she covers it with the blanket. Once she attempts to take it back, she learns she can't. It looks like someone invisible might be standing on the blanket. Soon what looks like standing seems to turn into walking, and Cecilia fearfully yells out to James. He rushes into the room, hearing her tell him she saw footprints. Since she panics about it, he wants her to know that Adrian will haunt her if she lets him. He says she has an important job interview tomorrow. He does not want a deceased man to ruin it. In the next scene, she is at the interview. The interviewer wants to see some of her work, but upon opening her briefcase, nothing is there. She knows she put her work there and is baffled about it being gone. The man tells her it's okay, because she could send it to them. While he talks, he notices she's not feeling well. She gets up, only to faint in a few seconds. Afterward, she sits in the hospital with James. A doctor tells her to take things easy for the next several days. Back at the house, Cecilia answers a ringing landline. The doctor calls to say they got the results of her blood test. She says, diazepam was most likely the cause of Cecilia's fainting. Hearing this confuses our heroine. She notices the bottle of pills on the sink. Picking it up, she sees bloodstains on it. She must have known that she lost the bottle in these last weeks. Now that it's there, she probably has an idea of what is happening. She's talking to Adrian's brother Tom, telling him to tell Adrian to stop what he is doing. One night, she was thinking about how to leave him. She was planning it, and he was staring at her. Oddly, without her saying anything, he told her she could never leave him. He would find her wherever she went. He would be in her presence, yet she wouldn't be able to see him. He would, however, leave her a sign for her to know he is there. Placing the bottle of pills for Tom to see, she says the night she left Adrian, she injected him with the diazepam. Despite Cecilia losing the bottle that night, somehow it returned to her. She wants Tom to understand that his brother is not deceased. Of course, Tom mentions the ashes in the urn. Cecilia doesn't know how Adrian did it, but he figured out a way to be invisible. Since he is a world leader in optics, she knows he could pull it off. She thinks Tom knows what she is talking about. Tom replies that Adrian's brilliance was in him knowing people's weaknesses. According to him, the only thing more brilliant than inventing an invisible device is Adrian not inventing it while making someone think he did. Furthermore, he says his brother controlled him long before he met Cecilia. He was actually relieved when he heard Adrian passed away. To prove he is gone, Tom takes out a photo of Adrian's corpse. The next scene has Cecilia visiting her sister, who is upset. She accuses the former of calling her suffocating, an accusation that confuses Cecilia. Emily clarifies that she received an email from her this morning. Once, Cecilia says Adrian is doing this to her. Emily advises her sister to take medication prior to closing the door on her. At James's house, she checks her email and sees there is indeed one sent from her name to Emily. She sees the word suffocating in there, which prompts her to cry. Unfortunately, it does not end there. More horrible statements are written in the email. As a result of reading such badness, Cecilia lies on the floor and agonizes over it. At this moment, Sydney comes to her. She says they could have a girl's night eating cake. Hearing this brings some happiness back to her. Alas, it is extremely short-lived because something suddenly strikes Sydney down. The girl thinks Cecilia did it and yells out to her dad. Upon arriving, his daughter tells him Cecilia hit her, but our heroine tries to tell him the truth. Since she says Adrian is there, James angrily tells her to stop talking about him. He has had enough. As James walks away with Sydney, Cecilia follows them, saying this is the kind of trouble Adrian creates. Left alone in the house, she asks Adrian where he is. Angered, she demands that he show himself and hit her instead. She equips herself with a knife before pouring coffee powder on the floor. While she sits to wait, she asks Adrian why he chose her. 
She thinks he can have any woman he wants. She just stumbled into his life one night at a party. She also wants him to know there is nothing left for him to take, for he already took it all. Soon she calls a phone number, and hears a phone vibrating in the ceiling, of all places. In a few seconds, the call goes to Adrian's voicemail. Thus, she uses the ladder she bought to open the entrance to the attic. Getting in there, she shines a flashlight into the darkness. She calls the number again to see the vibrating phone. Unnervingly, it has photos of Cecilia sleeping beside Sydney. A knife inside plastic is there too. Following this discovery, the phone gets a message, which reads, Surprise. When she returns to the entrance, she spills paint downward to reveal an invisible person. She wasn't delusional. He's really out there. The revelation scares her to fall back. After she collects herself, she jumps out of the attic. She walks cautiously inside the house with the knife ready. A sound comes from the kitchen, so she goes there. Water runs in the sink and Cecilia sees why. The invisible man was washing off the paint she spilled on him. In a short time, she gets picked up by the one she cannot see. He deals with the poor lady in painful ways. She struggles to fight, but it's hard to fight someone invisible. Once she breaks two plates over him, she manages to run out of the house. There she gets a lift driver to arrive, and she wants him to urgently leave the area. Cecilia has a long ride until she returns to the house she ran away from. Entering Adrian's house, she sees the furniture covered in sheets. Zeus is still there for some reason. She walks into the research room, where she tries to put in a code to unlock the most important room. She guesses it's the date she met Adrian, causing the door to open. Since that's what it took, she calls it romantic. Inside the room, she touches a pad on the wall and activates the process of something beginning to appear. Eventually, a suit seems to materialize. Except it doesn't do that. It goes from an invisible state to a visible one. It is a trailblazing piece of wear. Cecilia removes it from its mannequin. She occupies a closet, hiding the suit there. She stays there to wait. It does not take long for the door to open seemingly by itself. Once she sees a footprint form on the floor from an invisible source, she tries to run away. The invisible man doesn't let her get away by throwing Cecilia on the floor. Thankfully, Zeus runs to the unseen man to bark at him. This gives Cecilia a chance to run out of the house, and we soon see her riding in the car of her Lyft driver. She talks on the phone, telling someone to meet her tonight at a public place. She doesn't think she has much time left. In the next scene, she sits in a restaurant where Emily arrives to meet her. Cecilia thanks her for being there before saying she loves her. She says she needs Emily's strength in her life right now. She also needs her sister to believe what she is about to say. Thus she whispers that she went to Adrian's house today. She found something there that could prove what she was experiencing. It is a suit with cameras, built by Adrian. During this important moment, a knife seems to float in the air between the sisters, and it slices Emily's neck. Following this, the knife quickly gets placed in Cecilia's hand. When Emily falls to her demise, a nearby woman screams upon witnessing her being deceased. Cecilia is shocked to the point of not knowing how to process this situation that corners her. She stands up and drops the knife prior to getting brought down to get handcuffed. All of this results in her being taken against her will inside a hospital. The personnel there strap her into a bed while she yells that she sees Adrian. Once she is left alone, someone in the room says, Surprise! Later, she sits in another room with two policemen. James is one of them. She tells him she has something that will prove Adrian is alive, and he becomes interested. He wants to know what she has, prompting her to look in the corner. She says she can't tell him now because Adrian is listening. James says he should not have left her alone. He thinks he failed her. In Cecilia's room, a nurse asks her if she knew she was pregnant. Turning to look at her, Cecilia says she did not know. She doesn't think it's right. But the nurse says the pregnancy probably occurred sometime in the last month. As the nurse keeps talking to her, Cecilia zones out due to the shocking news. She is led elsewhere to speak to Tom. She asks if he is her lawyer, to which he replies he is the lawyer for her source of income. Since she engaged in a criminal act, he says her payments of Adrian's money will get halted. Cecilia says she used to feel sorry for him for being Adrian's brother. However, now she sees him for what he really is. She says Tom is the jellyfish version of Adrian. He has everything except the spine. Tom responds by giving her a document to sign that will have her agree to the halting of the payments. Or she can agree to have the baby and go back to Adrian. Those words indicate the man is still alive. Tom says his brother knew she was secretly using birth control. He replaced them with something else. A new life with Adrian can be given to her with one phone call. But she angrily pushes the document and the phone on the floor. Cecilia refuses to do it, saying Adrian took her sister's life and Tom helped him. Tom does not get angry. He says he can return in three days. She still has time to make a decision. When he leaves, she takes a piece of sticky material from the table. The next scene has Cecilia in her room, where she used the sticky material to stick a pen to the wall. She takes it and tells Adrian he will not get the baby or her. So she disturbingly uses the writing utensil. While she does, her arm gets grabbed by the invisible man. 
she stabs him with the pen, causing his suit to flicker in and out of visibility. After he kicks her off, an officer notices a problem. He walks into the room, seeing the invisible man being partially visible. He tries to apply his stun gun, yet he's the one who gets stunned by it. With the door open, Cecilia is given a chance to start running away. As she runs, she bumps into two officers, who start taking her back to her room. They mistakenly drag her to the invisible man, and he deals with them. Once more officers come, he deals with them too. Cecilia collects a gun, before she follows the invisible man into the stairs room. From there, she gets out of the hospital. She sees the man's suit flicker near the parked cars and shoots at him. She searches for him while hiding behind the cars. The perpetrator eventually appears to grab her. He says if she fights him, he won't hurt her. He will hurt someone she loves, instead. He decides to take Sydney's life, prompting Cecilia to plead for him not to. He gets in a car to drive away. Cecilia also gets in a car that's not hers to follow him. As she drives, she contacts James to inform him his daughter's life is in danger. At his house we observe from the invisible man's point of view. He enters Sydney's room, and she wakes up due to sensing his presence. The girl doesn't hesitate to use her pepper spray, which gets to him. She runs out of her room screaming but soon gets brought down. In the meantime, James arrives at the house with his gun ready. He sees Sydney lying on the floor, and the invisible man makes him join her. The girl is forced to watch how her father gets beaten to a bloody state. Fortunately, Cecilia rushes in with a fire extinguisher, using it to reveal the invisible man. She follows this by firing several bullets into him. Now that he lies on the floor, she takes off his mask. Shockingly, the man is Tom, not Adrian. This discovery injects our heroine with a big dose of confusion. Afterward, we see the police entering Adrian's house. They hear someone yell behind the wall, so they break through it. In there sits a restrained Adrian. Switching to a police station, James tells Cecilia that the police found Adrian restrained in his basement this morning. James says he was a victim of his brother like she was, yet she does not agree with him. She knows Adrian did this and he's not a victim. If he can fake his demise, he can fake his kidnapping. According to Cecilia, Adrian planned everything. She thinks he set his brother up. She wants James to understand this is what Adrian does. At night, she calls the man she ran away from, and he says he's glad she did. She returns to his house, seeing him stand near the entrance to greet her. He wears a smile, saying she looks amazing. Cecilia replies, she doesn't feel amazing along with telling him it's all a lie. When they enter his house, she sees he has an exquisite dinner prepared for them. They sit down at the table, and we see a security camera recording them. Adrian says he knows he didn't treat her the way she should have been treated. However, he claims to have learned his lesson. Cecilia says if he wants to be a part of their child's life, it has to start with honesty. She needs him to admit everything he did. Therefore, she starts the road to honesty by saying it was him, not his brother. Disagreeing with her, he says Tom controlled him. She wants him to tell her the truth because she needs to know that she's not crazy. Since he says he's being truthful, she nearly yells for him to stop. We see James sitting in his car outside, listening to this conversation. Cecilia starts to cry and Adrian draws closer to her. He says he knows, sometimes she feels like she's going insane, but he's the only one who can help her. He thinks he knows her better than anyone else knows her. Due to her crying, she goes to the washroom. As he sits alone, someone invisible suddenly grabs his arm and uses his hand to cut his neck. At this moment, we watch it all unfold through the security camera. Adrian looks shocked that this happened before he falls over. While he gurgles on the floor, Cecilia approaches him and screams. She calls the emergency number, telling the operator that Adrian tried to take his own Hearing this, James rushes out of his car. After the phone call, Cecilia sits to look at the perishing Adrian. She simply says one word to him. Surprise. As she leaves the house, James runs to her and asks if she's okay. She tells him Adrian took his own There is a security camera video of it. James looks in her bag to see she has the invisibility suit in there. It makes him ask her if she ever wanted to get Adrian to admit anything on tape. She says she actually did. She just didn't know he was that unstable. She tells her friend he heard what happened. She wants him to tell her what it sounded like. He is forced to say it sounded like Adrian did what she said he did. James knows she took his life, yet he has to let her get away with it because of what Adrian did to him and his daughter. Thus she walks out of there, finally feeling free.